second thinker I want to take up is not a political philosopher per se, and not an individual that we would think of as someone in the line of Machiavellian thought that distances itself from the church. Uh, here we turn to the Anglican pastor uh, of the early 18th century, a man named Joseph Butler. Now, Joseph Butler's essay on human nature in many ways is responding to the accounting of human nature that is given to us by Thomas Hobbes and the Leviathan. Now, let's retrace our steps a little bit. What has Hobbes told us about human nature? Well, if we want to understand human nature, we don't turn to a book. We don't turn to the Bible. We don't turn to philosophy. We just read ourselves. We read our own inclinations. Now, what Hobbes has told us is that what our inclination is toward is our own preservation. Yes, we're capable of society, but it's not as if once we enter into society, we do so and can aspire towards virtue, public or private. We're always, even in society, accounting for our own being. And the only reason why we agree to that covenant, that we agree to that compact or contract, is that it's going to secure for us our own being. Now, here Butler references Romans 12 and suggests that that can't possibly be the case for human nature because we are one body in Christ. The hand may be different from the other parts of the body, but it is still part of the body. So what Butler wants to do in his sermon is make the suggestion that even though individuality defines in part human existence, it's not all of our existence. We are individual beings on one hand, and we are social beings on the other hand. Now, how does he make this case? How does he make this argument? And how does he do it in a way that will appeal to other moral philosophers? Well, he does two things. He points to two things in human nature that define us. Uh, the first is internally our conscience. We have a conscience that speaks to us so that if we want to do something that simply is in our own good but would transgress another, uh, it alerts us to the fact that we are committing a transgression or an evil or a problem. So internally there's a mechanism within human nature that checks us. But externally, and secondly, there's another mechanism that checks us, and that's our feeling of shame or honor based upon our outward actions. If our actions bring us honor, we are happy. If our actions bring us shame, we are sad. So there's an external mechanism that is checking human nature and an internal mechanism that is checking us. Butler will go on to say, it's an absurdity to think that the presence of a conscience and the presence of a shame point to anything but the fact that we as individuals are individuals on one hand, but have been made to be social beings on the other hand. So you may ask now, okay, well, Butler here has given us a sermon on human nature. How does Butler account for the presence of evil? Why do human beings do evil things? Why do human beings transgress if there's a conscience? Why do they transgress if there's a check that comes in honor and shame? Now, the answer that Butler gives us is very, very interesting. He says, the reason why we commit evils is that we are ignorant, that we are after external goods and we are desirous of those goods. And at the time that we desire things that aren't our own, at the time that we transgress, we do so in a way that is ignorant. There's almost a block upon that check within us. Now, a second thing that Butler says that's also important here, he takes into account the reality that in life, yes, there are sociopaths. There are individuals who seem to have no check, no accounting of why they do what they do. Here you'd think of the Roman emperor Nero. But those sociopaths are few and far between. Most of mankind acts in a way, yes, where they want to aspire towards their individual good, but they're able to aspire likewise toward a societal good. This is why we have the laws that we have. This is why we have the morals that we have. And this is why, by and large, throughout human history, human beings have been able to live with one another in community, caring for one another, not perfectly, but caring for one another. All to say, within human nature, the inclination towards communion and society allows human beings to live with one another. We are not simply individualistic, as Hobbes would have it. Thank you.